Um, so I'm asking, are those two things equivalent? And I also want to know why or why not? And I did ask if you can think of a property that is a reason why, that's what I would like to talk about. So I'll give you a couple more minutes and then we'll discuss this problem. We should be getting used to me asking you to explain yourself because it's going to happen a lot. Then you can just explain. explain. Yeah. If you can't think of the specific property, that's totally fine. Just explain. Very good. My bad. Okay, first part of the question, which I hope that most of us answered correctly, are these equivalent or not equivalent? So raise your hand if you think they are equivalent. Okay. Raise your hand if you think they are not equivalent. I'll try again. Raise your hand if you think they are equivalent. Raise your hand if you think they're not equivalent. They are equivalent. What do they equal if I were to solve them? 70. Does anybody know the property that I can use to take this first one and create the second one? Trey, what do you think? Um, not necessarily. That wouldn't be like, like this thing is called the something property. Yeah. Distributive property. Yep. So distributive property tells me that I can take this 10 and I can distribute it to everything inside the parentheses by multiplication. So 10 times, whew, 10 times three would be 30 and 10 times four would be 40 to give us 70. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do this problem. That's just something that can be applied. Can anybody think of any other math properties that they've used? Maybe you don't know specifically what they are right this moment. I'm going to refresh your memory, but maybe names of properties you've heard of or used or in math class. So we have distributive. There's four more that we're going to talk about today. Yes. Associative. Luke. Commutative. Yeah. There is a zero property. That's not one we're going to look at today, but that is one at, at some point in this class we will look at. And it's specifically called the zero product property. The other two, which may be a little less familiar for y'all, one is called the identity property, and the other one is called the inverse property. Okay, identity property and inverse property. Okay, so for now, we're going to skip the closure property. It's not necessarily um, appropriate for what we're talking about today, but in a couple of weeks, we'll come back to it. Oh, whoa, whoa. So I'm just gonna write this word skip up here. We will come back. Um, but for now, we're gonna ignore the um, closure property. Tatum, let me see if I can fit yours. Give me one second, y'all. Tatum, I just put another one in there. Um, so go ahead and X out or refresh your page and then let me know if that didn't work, okay? Yeah, guys, the storm is really bad. So for some reason we like lose power or something um, or you lose power, don't, don't like be worried. Just send me a message or email me whenever you can. Okay, commutative property. Some of you said you've heard of it. What does the commutative property allow us to do mathematically. So what does it say we're allowed to do? 
Yeah. You can switch the order. So if we're adding, if we had A plus B, we would be allowed to write it in a different order of B plus A and get the exact same answer. So A plus B, let's say it was two plus three, which is five, is the same thing as three plus two. Um, and the same thing goes for multiplication. If we multiply two things together, it is the same thing as multiplying them in the opposite order. So A times B would be the same answer as B times A. I still don't see it, it's just blank. So Tatum, what I'm gonna do, if it's still blank by the end, I can just give you my filled in page at the end. Um, so you'll have it in your notebook, okay? Just let me know if it hasn't loaded. number eight as my multiplication when I'm typing, okay? Um, so the associative property has the word associate in it. And when I think associate, we can associate things in math using parentheses. So for the associative property, so right now, A plus B has the parentheses and C is by himself on the outside. The associative property tells me that I can move those parentheses and I can put them around B and C, and now A is over there by himself. Yes, sir. So go to draw, and then you gotta click stop. Now try. There you go. It's because it doesn't automatically switch back and forth. So again, the same thing goes for our multiplication. If I am multiplying two things inside the parentheses and I have something multiplied outside, I can switch those parentheses to around the two other things. But I, one key thing to notice, the order of the number slash letters slash variables did not change. On both sides of the equal sign, it still says A, B, C in that same order. The parentheses location is the only thing that changed, okay? okay? All right, identity. Anybody have a guess? This one may be brand new for most of you, and that's okay. Identity. What's your guess? It means multiplying a number by one and still getting the number, right? Yeah, Selena. Go ahead, Robert. Sure. That's what Selena, so that'd be for multiplication. Does anybody have an idea about what identity would be for addition? Selena, you can go ahead. It's adding zero, right? Yeah, Nihal said that in the chat. So adding zero. So for identity for addition, we can add zero to any number whatsoever and we're still gonna get that number. So 800 million times plus zero is gonna be 800 million. Just like if we were to multiply that number by one, we would still get that number as a result. Okay, so now I want you to impress your language arts teachers. What is a synonym for the word inverse? What is a synonym for the word inverse? Opposite. So if we're talking about the inverse property, it is saying that I can add opposite. So A and negative A, what would my answer be when I add two opposite numbers? So like six and negative six, yeah. We're adding six and negative six together. What would our answer be? Mm -mm. Brady, what do you think? 
Zero, right. Any opposites we add, the answer is going to be zero, no matter what. Yes, Lena, Neil, good job. Um, now, nobody answer out loud. I'm going to have you think about this for like a whole entire minute. What can I multiply any number by to get one? Don't answer out loud. Simpkin. Oh. Okay, what's up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say like, so you need to go to where their first attempt was. And like, if you go to that quiz, you should be able to, you have to open it back up for them. Yeah. I'll have to come show you later. I can't, it's hard for me to explain on the phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Make it as an assignment and not a quiz. Yes. Okay. 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 Anybody come up with anything? What can you multiply anything by and get one? Selena, what do you think? You'd have to do that number, except it would be, um, well, can I just give you an example? So if the number was yeah, 30, on the announcements are about to go off. A second. We are currently under a tornado warning. Hmm. So what we just need to do is make sure that we have no individuals, adults, or students near windows. Some my window people. And we need to review what we would do in case we have no and we know the policies for that, going out in the hallway and taking a specific stance. Teachers, you might want to go ahead and review that with your teachers at this time. Uh, with your students, there is no cause for alarm right now. This is just to make sure that we do not have students outside of classrooms or adults or have individuals by windows. So let's review our um, tornado procedures, and we'll be back in touch with you if we need to. And we'll also let you know when we go back down from a warning. Thank you. Selena, hold on one, just one second, okay? Um, if you got, if you three gentlemen could find a different table to sit at, just take your chair. And if you're, if they're coming to sit by you, you both need to have your masks on, please, okay? I would appreciate that. Thank you. Um, okay. So Selena, keep going. So give me an example. Okay. So if you had 36, you'd multiply um 36 by 136. Okay. Would be so if you had 36, 36 or... I'm going to write it for you. So if you had 36, you would multiply that by 136 and that would give you one, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so let's make this, yes, sorry. Sure. So, yes, you're correct, but that's not going to give me a result of one. I want the answer to be one, not what I'm multiplying to be one. So, like, what you're saying is multiply this times that, right?
Well, I can, I have to multiply it by something. I can't just add an exponent to it. That's the rule. I have to multiply it by a number. So I'm going to kind of generalize what Selena said. Um, so I can take any number. We're using a variable A. And I can multiply it by 1 over that thing. And it will give me a answer of 1, an answer of 1. Um, again, I was supposed to go over the uh, tornado procedures that Mr. Shell pretty much did. If we were told to go into the hallway, y'all would just go up against the locker, duck and cover sort of situation, OK? Um, does anybody know what that's called? If we flip it over and put it in the denominator, it's a fancy word. What is it? Reciprocal. So basically what we're doing is we're taking that number and we are multiplying it by its reciprocal. Um, and that would give us a result of one every single time. All right, last one, distributive. I'm not going to talk too long because we kind of talked about it already. But if I have a number outside of the parentheses and two numbers inside being added or subtracted, I can distribute that number to everything inside the parentheses. So I have A times B plus a times C. So I'm taking this A and I'm kind of giving it or multiplying it to both of those things inside the parentheses. Underneath this table, there are three equations. I would like you to tell me what property is being used to get from the left-hand side of the equal sign to the right-hand side of the equal sign. But if you're using commutative associative inverse identity, you need to tell me, is it of multiplication or is it of addition? All right, so we're not gonna name it yet, but if we look at that first problem, all I want you to recognize is what is different comparing the left-hand side of the equal sign and the right-hand side of the equal sign? Just tell me visually what happened. Gentlemen, if I need, please don't make me move you right now. Yes. Yeah, the six Y and the four swapped places. So when I hear those swapped places, my mind should immediately go to commutative property because the commutative property allows me to change the order of things. But I told you that I need you to be specific, right? So how are the six Y and four related? What operation is happening between the six Y and the four? Yes, addition. So it is the commutative property of addition. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, that's a good, I've never heard about that. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to remember it. So um, if y'all didn't hear him, he said for commutative, like you're commuting around, so you're moving and then associative, you're like associating in groups. So that's how it deals with those parentheses. Okay, the second one, um, it's kind of a little bit my bad. I should have written the first, the right-hand side on the left and switched them because that would make more sense if we were using the distributive property, which is what it is. Um, it is a distributive property because um, we don't usually write it in that order. So if we were to take this four, the four is distributing to all three of those things inside the parentheses via multiplication. So four times four X gives us that 16 X squared, four times X would be four X and four times one would give us that four. So that would be the distributive property. Okay, let's look at the last one. The last one, again, I don't wanna know the property yet. I just wanna know what is different on the left-hand side versus the right-hand side. What's changed? Yeah. The parentheses switch. So the location of the parentheses is different. None of the order of anything changed. It still says 18X, 2X, 4x and 1 in that same order on both sides of the parentheses. The only thing that changes those parentheses went from 4x and 1 and now they're around 2x and 4x. So that would be the associative property. And then how 
are those two things related? Are they being added or multiplied? We're gonna just say it, added or multiplied. Okay. Add, so it'd be addition. 